So in today's video, we're going to be showing you guys these amazing 3D printed hubs that Maddie made himself. Like he completely designed this thing from top to bottom. I've never even seen a hub that's designed this way before. So like it literally is like a one off. And uh, we're going to tell you the story on how it all came together. A couple months back, we were hanging out here at the bike shop and Maddie's like, dude, I'm gonna start making some parts. And we're like, that's not gonna happen. Maddie's an amateur 3D printer guy. I didn't even think he knew how to do anything with it. But then he blew our minds by showing us the first version of the hub. The first hub that I tried to print, uh, I made it using profile internals and everything. And I tried to print the shells and I ended up screwing it up multiple, multiple times. We finally got a completed shell where we're like, all right, let's build this up today. But we didn't even get the wheel fully built and the flanges on the hub broke off. So then I told Scott, give me one week. Actually, not even, give yeah, me like two days. He did, he said it was like two days at the time. And I, like, I completely, <laughs> I was like, there's no shot. So if you guys look at this hub, this is the one that Maddie created himself. And if you can see on both sides here are very different flanges than a regular BMX hub. This one is the only thing that looks similar because this is like off of, I don't even know which They're similar to a Primo right. hub. This is a similar mm -hmm. flange to a Primo hub where all the spokes actually go through the inside of the hub. And I did this because when you 3D print, you have to 3D print things standing up. So if you print it like this, all the material ad adheres together better. Where a normal BMX flange that sticks out, there's no support underneath. So the plastic doesn't adhere very good. And the plastic, like it comes out hot. So like if, it, if there's nothing supporting it underneath, it'll start like falling it'll just, down. It'll droop down or it'll miss or something. So if you build everything standing up, you have to come up with designs that kind of make more sense for my 3D printer. So that's why we came up with these super intricate hub designs. Yeah, like this front, this is the front hub right here. And you can see it's just, it's really clean and it's really awesome looking. So just imagine this, Maddie had to not only design the external part of the shell, right? To come up with the design of it, figure out exactly where the spoke holes had to go, which is insane. But he also had to find a way to put the hardware on the inside there. So imagine that, there's gotta be bearings that are getting put inside here. So it, it was super impressive. For yeah. people that don't know much about 3D printing, like me. <laughs> yeah, um, there's a lot of different materials you can use. A lot of different <laughs> materials, apparently. So. And this is literally the material that came with my very basic 3D printer. <laughs> this is nothing special at all. So let's talk about the actual 3D printer itself. It's a Dremel. The price is about $500. So it's not like an insanely not, expensive tool. It's beautiful, it's a beautiful machine, but it's not like a million dollar machine. And, and for <laughs> what it's capable of doing, yeah. I think it's like the best bargain for yeah. technology ever when it comes to a 3D printer. So let's talk about what you use to design the hubs. I mean, you use certain kind of programs, like how did it go? I downloaded a very easy program called Tinkercad. Well, actually you don't even have to download it. You can just type it in tinkercad.com. And on Tinkercad, you just use generic shapes. Like I'm talking squares and triangles and whatever to build objects like this. Such a basic program that they use it in elementary school Make, for children to build sense. shapes. You could build blocks that, out of it. That's insane. It's, it's like too easy. So basically these hubs are built of like more or less hundreds of different shapes. That's kind of what it is. Yeah, you have the rear hub the whole, you know, flanges, all the stuff where the bearings go, but you also had to make the teeth on it where the hub actually engages. That was actually built on Tinkercad 2, which yeah. is pretty insane, man. Yeah. I can't believe you pulled that one off. So what I did is I just built it in plastic. You know, it might not have been the best idea because obviously this plastic's not meant to be built for... A, well, it's, a, especially know. when you're you're putting something that's metal and it's going against plastic. Yeah, under so. that much stress, obviously I knew it wasn't gonna last forever and I didn't plan for these hubs to last forever but it worked perfect. The first pedal, I was like, can't beat it. This is absolutely amazing. So I used a profile driver, a mini driver, and um, that was what I designed every little paw off of and everything. So that leads us to where we're at right now with the finished product right here. So this is the MC V1, right? Yep. That's the name of yep. your, your, that was, this your the, company. It's carved this, in there. This is basically the company, see. and this is the company's MC, that's my initials, and this is V1, so version one. This is for all the parts that I've been doing and all the projects I've been doing. I just label them V1 and I have it printed on there. You can see on this side, there is the internal kind of uh, laced area. So just like the Primo hub. So the lace, the spokes go from the uh, inside out. So it's not like it's extremely common. The regular vertical flange is way more common. But then Maddie had to make some room because you see how much smaller this side is than over here. 
So he had to make it bigger on this side and he got really creative over here and came up with a ridiculous combination. So You're never gonna see like a hub like you this. You probably lady. can't tell, but it actually uses two different spokes as well. So the normal side over here uses regular J-Bend spokes. And then this side over here uses straight pull spokes. And the reason we did the straight pull spokes is because when I came up with this um, design, I figured I could stack the most amount of material and 3D printed. So it would 3D print from the bottom up like this. So it'd be able to adhere the most amount of material and the straight pull spokes would have the least amount of like pulling pressure on it. Because with the J-Bend, they have to hook and yank on the hub. So with the straight pull, it's kind of just like a more, uh, I guess like a lateral pull on it. So with all the material on it, it actually held up extremely well. We had one that broke. Just, yeah, just one. one. And what was, and that was from building it too, right? That was like, I think it was like almost like one of the first few spokes. So what I think is we put it through and we let the hub hang too early oh. without the rest of them in. And it just put so much pressure on it that it cracked. And we didn't even notice until later on. I ended up taking it out. We rode the hub and we did multiple tricks on it and drops on it and everything. Because that was the big test. It was like, all right, great. You could build a hub, but does it actually work? So oh, the yeah. tests that we ended up doing yeah, were actually. just popping around in the back, oh, seeing if it cranked, and it did. Oh, it, yeah. it cranked, I mean, for a little while. Eventually it started to pull apart. <laughs> we knew you know? it was not gonna work forever, yeah. and we knew it wasn't gonna be perfect. So we did a hot bar spin. We did a hot bar spin. We did a 180. 180 as well. But the biggest test that we did was to see the impact test. So we had Maddie go on the concrete wall that's behind our shop and see if he could land it, if that thing was just gonna blow up into a million pieces. And it actually survived, which is insane. Not one crack in yeah, rear nothing hub. broke like, about it. It was and only the build like process spaceship. that broke it and then the internals. And that let's was just it. say it again, this is the cheap plastic, guys. This is not the really high tense, like really no. expensive stuff. This is the, the most basic stuff that you could possibly get. So the fact that it held up was amazing, yeah. but it didn't hold up in every point. Let me show you this. If you look on the inside here, after a little while, it just started ripping apart. There's nothing left yeah, in there It started to get all. pretty crunchy as we were riding and everything. So we had to pull it apart just to see what it looked like inside. Yeah. We did it and it was just like, multiple little plastic pieces yeah. falling out so which was we knew it was gonna yeah. happen the truth is maddie completely designed one of the coolest hubs i've ever seen and he did this in 48 hours on a time <laughs> limit and still it blows my mind that this thing actually worked and just huge shout out to maddie for making this happen appreciate it. i was pretty excited about it and to see it now it, it's still every time i pull it up i'm like that is a cool looking hub. Like yeah. I would love for that hub to be on my bike yeah, one day. That you know? would be really I don't awesome. know how I can make that into a metal hub, but I would love to have a hub shell yeah, that looks like this. But just the engineering that went into designing this hub and making it come together and to be able to build it on a 3D printer in 48 hours of engineering and then ride it and actually work was so impressive to me. And like at that point, I was like so excited to see what he was gonna come out with next. And we haven't done any 3D printer stuff in a little while. I don't know why. I've, I've made some very basic things since then. Like I've made rulers and like fun little gadgets that like help me around the house. Like Which, things like that. <laughs> that. And that makes sense. Like, but when it comes to BMX parts, yeah, BMX is such an aggressive sport. So like when you're kind of designing parts out of plastic, it's pretty dangerous. The fact is, it's like, what do we do next? If, is there anything to do next? What, what could we possibly do? I've got some ideas, Scott. If you really want to know. I've got some ideas. Well, I'll this? get to We printing. won't even tell anybody, but I think I'll we should get, get back in here and I think we should make <laughs> some cool cool stuff because this is just so impressive. So huge shout out to Maddie for making this happen. And any of you guys that do 3D printing out there, I'm sure you guys would be pretty impressed seeing that Maddie came up with this design right here. So, But that's going to be it, guys. Just wanted to show you this amazing 3D printed hub. And just to educate you guys that don't know anything about 3D printing, it's not like we know a ton about it, but mm -hmm. like... We know no. enough to be able to do cool stuff like this. And if you guys get a 3D printer for yourself, which is actually fairly cheap considering what yeah. you can pull off with it, like sky's the limit. Yeah, man. get creative. Just have some fun, put some shapes together. Yeah, I'm excited to see what it's really in, cool. <laughs> in, in life in general comes out with yeah. 3D printing over the next few years. But guys, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this video going over these 3D printed parts. Um, if you have any ideas for other BMX parts that you think we should possibly try, put them in the comments. We'll be open to see if it's we possible or not. We are up for the challenge. And if you are anybody that is talented at 3D printing, please put it in the comments yep. and tell us you know, what we should do, what kind of plastic we should use, anything like that. So in future videos, things are going to work a little bit better. So guys, that's it. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.